If you're using Superior Drummer within a digital audio workstation or a DAW, a lot of the audio and MIDI controls are going to be configured by your DAW. You're going to set your buffer size and your input and output devices there. But when you're using standalone, it's an app in itself and you're going to have to configure how you're getting MIDI in and out of it and how you're getting sound in and out of it. Some of these settings will translate over to the DAW as well, especially if you're dealing with multiple outputs and things like that. So to adjust that, go to settings right up here in the top of the menu bar. We're going to scroll down to audio MIDI setup. So at first, you're going to pick your device type and your output device. You'll also get to choose your buffer size from here. The buffer size will have a direct effect on your latency. So when you press a key to when you hear the drum. Obviously with drums, you're probably going to want to have as low a buffer size and as less latency as you can possibly have. It can be very difficult to play drums with a little bit of a delay. Of course, you're always going to have to balance that with your CPU power. Superior Drummer is a powerful program, so if you set your buffer size too low, you could get some audio artifacts, some crackling and things like that. If you adjust it, you're going to want to apply and you'll be able to see the actual latency from when you're playing the note to where it actually sounds out of your audio device. So you want to go as low as you can without getting audio artifacts. If you're working in a DAW, you're going to have to adjust it for your DAW. And you know, you've got other instruments loaded up. You might have a great bass that's also taking up a lot of CPU power. So I know it's tempting to just say, well, put it as low as you can. I want it really, really low all the time. But you know, this is the real world and you're going to have other instruments loaded up. If you're using standalone, you're probably going to put it as low as you want because you're not running a lot of other stuff. For output channels, typically you'll have your output 1 and 2 do left and right, but if you're using a multi-output, you can enable that here, and you can choose other outputs on your audio interface and configure that. There's a lot of reasons why you might want to do that. Maybe you want to output your kick and snare on separate channels to front of house. So a lot of people, if they're touring with Superior Drummer and using e-drums and triggering Superior Drummer with them, you want to give the front of house guy independent control over your kick, snare, and things like that. You also might want to send your bleed tracks separately or your overhead mics separately so that they can apply their own reverb and determine you know, what's best for each song. So multi-out can be important if you're going to be sending your audio somewhere else. In terms of MIDI devices, you can determine which MIDI devices are going to actually respond or trigger sounds in Superior Drummer. So if you've got a lot of MIDI controllers and you don't want to accidentally play drums when you mean to play piano or something like that, you can enable only the MIDI devices that are there. If your device isn't showing up, you can click on Rescan Devices and then you can pick the one you want. Of course, if you have nothing selected, then no MIDI devices are going to trigger the sounds in Superior Drummer, and you're not going to hear anything unless you make it internally in the engine. So I'll select a keyboard for now. And then on that keyboard, if you only want certain MIDI channels to respond, you can do that too. So if you're going to use the drum pads on your MIDI device, and it responds to channel 2, and you want to be able to use your piano keys to trigger a piano sound somewhere else, you can easily tell this to ignore channel 1 and only listen to channel 2. Or if you're going to just use it typically where you open it up and you want it to respond to all MIDI, you're going to leave it on any. You'll probably want to leave it on any if you're going to use electronic drums because a lot of the times, even though you're using only a single instrument, electronic drums will send quite a bit of information and data over alternate MIDI channels like a hi-hat controller pedal or dampening information, things like that. So you definitely want to probably leave it as wide open as you possibly can.